Hello and welcome to Car Retrospective, where I have previously talked about the Bugatti Veyron, a very expensive car. But boy, you haven't seen expensive yet, so get rid of your McLarens and Koenigseggs as we investigate the Ferrari 250 GTO. Let's have a look. Our story begins all the way back in the early 60s. Ferrari needed a car to race in the Group 3 Grand Tour Racing Car category to compete with cars such as the Jaguar E-Type and the Shelby Cobra. Work began by 1962 and was led by Ferrari designer Giotto Bizzarini. Bizzarini's main priority when designing the car was to make the body as streamlined as possible to improve the top speed and stability, as well as creating all the mechanical elements of the car as conservatively as possible. However, although credited as the main designer of the GTO, Bizzarini, along with many other Ferrari employees, were fired partway through the creation of the car after a disagreement with Enzo Ferrari. But the project was later picked up by one more of Fogarini. In order to create the car conservatively, components for the engine, body and chassis were ones already proven to work in GT racing to save time and cost developing it, for example using a minimally modified chassis from a Ferrari 250. Another way the car was built conservatively was by giving the interior a very minimal design, featuring no carpeting, no speedometer and was only ventilated by exterior air inlets. The car was to be powered by a 3 litre V12, able to produce 296 horsepower when built, with a top speed of 174 miles per hour or 280 kilometers per hour, which isn't bad for the time. In 1962, in order for a car to be entered into the Group 3 racing series, the FIA, the people who organised it, required that at least 100 cars had to be built, but Ferrari only built 39. To elude the FIA's rules, Ferrari numbered the chassis on the 39 cars out of sequence, skipping numbers to give the impression that cars that didn't exist, did exist, as well as shuffling the cars between different locations to strengthen the illusion. Although there were 39 250s made, they weren't all the same, there were different variants. 33 were the original model as first designed, i.e. Series 1. 3 were improved models with a 4 litre engine and modified chassis, i.e. Series 2. And 3 were further improved 250s with further revised bodyworks, i.e. the Type 64s. But enough of that mumbo jumbo, the 250 GTO finally debuted on March 24, 1962 at 12 hours of Sebring driven by American Phil Hill and Belgian Oliver Genderdeen, with a successful second place finish. Although collecting many successful results in racing throughout the 60s, the front engine 250 GTO, along with other front engine racers, became obsolete after mid and rear engine cars were found to be more successful, leaving them to only compete in vintage races. But the story truly begins long after the 250 GTO was removed from competitive racing. Throughout the 70s and 80s, classic car value rose rapidly. While a brand new 250 GTO was worth $18,500 in 1962, by 1990, the peak of the boom, the same car will be worth around $13 million. However, the classic car value saw a huge drop throughout the early 90s. For example, a 250 GTO was sold to a Japanese buyer in 1989 for $14.6 million, but was sold again in 1994 for just $3.5 million. However, classic car value began to climb once again by the late 90s, surpassing the previous record by around 2005. This led to the record for the most expensive GTO ever sold, as well as the most expensive car ever sold, being broken in May 2018 by WeatherTech CEO David McNeil, being bought for... $70 million. The reason it went for such a high price was because this 1963 version was largely original, only being slightly modified in the 90s. This record is likely to hold for many years to come. You aren't going to be seeing a Gallardo going for that sort of money anytime soon. And there is the Ferrari 250 GTO, a truly beautiful car that, although it didn't see as fulfilling racing career as some of its main rivals of the time, the 250 truly is a car to remember. But would I fork over $70 million for one? No way. Mostly because I don't have that sort of money though.